Dear friends, welcome to the next lecture on the basics of biblical doctrine. And this lecture will be about the external knowledge of God from creation, how we see it, and why do we believe that man is created and that man is still maintained. Well, there are a couple of questions we have to answer in this lesson. And I really appreciate you watch even this video and I would appreciate or at least encourage you also to watch the previous ones that are already up online on our channel. Well, this lecture is about the external knowledge. In the previous lectures we thought about the existence of God. How can God be known? That's in the source of nature and we call that external knowledge. Knowledge we see in nature knowledge that we sometimes also feel in our hearts. In the previous lecture, we spoke about atheism and why we do believe that that cannot be true. We say it's rather a wish that people want to do than an actual belief. So they don't really believe it. They wish that God doesn't exist. Well, in this lecture then, the question is, how do we know from nature that God exists? And for this, we need to go to creation. And the Bible is very clear about it. If you read with me in Psalm 19, and there of the first verse, we read this, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. We see in this Psalm that it is God speaking through things in nature. It's the heavens. It is the firmament. That's another word for heaven. That's a Hebrew way of speaking for what we see around us. So it's very important to take this verse literal. We see things in creation that is very clear that God exists. And we said already, this is knowledge we have externally that we acquire or that we obtain, that we learn from. It speaks of the second type of knowledge, not what we are born with, but what we, by study, can more and more obtain and that's very important it says in the question it is derived from nature that means we get it from nature and how do we get it well tell me how many senses we do have we have eyes to see we have ears to hear we have a mouth to speak we have our sense that can taste we have a sense that can touch we have feelings you can say there's five different senses the seeing of the eye the hearing of the ear, the touch of the fingers, the smell of the nose, and the taste in the mouth. Now, if we now think about the first two, the eyes that we see and the ears that we can hear, how do we know God exists? Well, if we look around us, what do we see? We see the beauty of creation. We see something of design in it. We see things are growing day after day. Water comes down from the heavens and it comes into the earth and it causes the wheat plants to grow. But how do we hear from nature that God exists? Well, if you have been in nature, you know. You've heard the birds singing. That's beautiful. That's a song. That's music. If you awake in the morning and you hear those birds singing, it's just an orchestra what you hear of Bach or Beethoven. But there is more that we can hear that God is in nature. And one of the things is thunderstorms. Yes, we see the lightning coming from heaven down to the earth or between the clouds. Or we can hear the thundering voice of God speaking in nature. And some people of old would call this the voice of God speaking through the thunder. And an example you can find in Scripture in Exodus 19 and 20, where God gives the law. And what do we read? He spoke with thunderings and lightnings that the people were afraid. Dear friends, this is God. God speaking. So we see the colors in nature. We hear the voice of a baby crying. And we have to say, dear friends, that a human being exists of two things of our body that we can see here, but also of a soul that is not visible, 
It's our mind. It consists of our mind, our will, the things we think of, our actions we do. And we can say that God is more connected to the soul than to the body. Why is that? Because God is a spirit, we say. That means we don't see it, but he is there. Our soul is also a spirit that we cannot see, but we still experience. We have a will. We have thoughts in our minds. And we have to say at death that the body is separated from the soul and the soul goes back either to God who has made it, as said in one of the Proverbs, or it is to hell, a place of fire where it will be punished because it didn't desire God. Well, now it's kind of clear how we get the knowledge of God from nature. And now the question you can ask, and and that might be valid, is how do we then know with these things that there must be a God? How can we then conclude from creation that a God exists? And it's a valid question. It's great you asked that. Well, because things in creation cannot exist or continue without an external source out of themselves. That means they must necessarily have been created and still be sustained by God. So what do we mean by that? It's very simple. Every human being has a beginning. You have a beginning in life. I have a beginning in life. Every human being has a continuation in life. And in both cases, there has to be an action that we came into being. There has to be something that sustains and maintains us. And it's very clear, dear friends, that we did not come into existence out of ourselves. There was an external source causing that. Yes, our parents. But more than that, there was a God that created us and made us alive. But it's not only that. It's also that God sustains or maintains We need everyday food. And who is giving us the food? We need water. And who is giving us the water? Dear friends, we are the most aware of these things when we are sick, when we are in trouble, don't you think? When you're in the army, and you're fighting against the enemy, and everything is dark and fearful, there is no atheist there. They all believe that they need someone to help them. Oh, dear friends, that's exactly what is God. He sustains life and He shows sometimes by sickness or difficulties that we are so dependent on Him. And that's why we can so clearly say that God not only starts something in creation, but that He also sustains and maintains it. Yes, there is people that say there is God, the Creator, but then he left it to himself. That's called deistic evolution. God, as it were, worked through the laws of nature and he just lets it go like a clock. You wind it up and then it runs automatically. But what's the problem with this example? A clock you have to wind up every time again. You cannot just start it and then let it go. No, there has to be someone who winds it up again and again. And so with our lives. It's God who starts it as this clock, and it's God who continues it till we die. And dear friends, it's good to remember these things, that yes, God sustains, God continues our lives, your life and my life, even though we don't realize. But dear friends, there comes a day that we have to meet this God, and then the one question that is, To be answered is, do we know this God? Do you know this God? Can you say in your heart that you know Him? That you've spoken to Him by prayer? Oh, that's so necessary. Pray then this God that He shows Himself to you, yes, through nature. But we will hear also next time that nature is not enough for salvation. Then we need what we have seen here, the Scriptures. I hope you search the scriptures to know more about this God. Dear friends, I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.
Goodbye.